So moved. A second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's kind of awkward, okay. So the benefit of the people at home, if they can even, if they can even hear me. Uh, today is March 20th, this is an emergency meeting of the Christian Board of Selection. Uh, we picked one item on our agenda related to the COVID-19, the town's COVID-19 response and a plan of action for continuing uh, to provide government services and accomplishment. Um, I am working remotely, and uh, we, uh, this is in some ways, a, in some ways a test of our ability to, to have meetings remotely. So I think we're going to find out whether or not we can that test. But uh, it, it, it did start well because the, the way we uh, attempted to communicate, uh, we couldn't be operational. So uh, I wanted to start, uh, Julie, by uh, asking you to prepare the document, which is a plan to. Um, Documents kind of a remote action plan temporary. Uh, why don't you just provide us with an overview of what this is and what you're proposing? Sure, um, and I don't know if um, Sunkman Gasper, if you want to take over any of this. Um, you and I worked on this um, a lot yesterday and the day before. Um, I'll at least start by saying that um, you know we we've heard a lot of the concerns. A lot is changing with. Um, all of the COVID-19 updates um, and trying to get ahead of things again. We sent heads um, to try to find out specifically in their own department what access they would, ha if they had to go remote, um, what essential functions could be performed um, and trying to navigate through issues and solutions that they may have within their own department. Um, so the selectmen received copies, um, thankful to our department heads for responding so quickly um, and trying to get a, an overview of their department. Um, the selectmen, um, Roger, I have I have printouts, I'll, I'll have to scan them and forward them to you so everyone can look them through, but um, we have we have copies of all the department's responses. Um, okay. And then... Um, Taking those responses, um, we were looking at um, maybe having a, a plan in place um, potentially for Monday. Um, again, Kevin, if you want to step in and, and take any of this that we've discussed, but um, what, I, what I've given you is a, an overview of what we were looking at um, to try to make sure that the amount of production that the department heads and, and their departments are able to produce continues. Um, we don't want to lose any productivity, but we also want to make sure that our employees feel safe. Um, and um, everything is constantly changing, so again, and staying ahead. Um, what this plan proposes is um, limiting the Tuesday evening hours um, so that Tuesdays end at 4 o'clock. The extended hours were um, an advantage to residents, but as the public, the town buildings are closed to the public, um, and we have employees who have daycare issues and things like that, the extended day um, really becomes more of a difficulty than a benefit. Um, to encourage remote work and social distancing, um, we're, we're asking departments to have one employee in their um, department at a time um, and to work on alternating schedules. So, um, you know, what, what Kevin had suggested is, you know, department heads would come in Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, the assistant or clerical person in the office would come in on Tuesday, Thursday. Um, that schedule could obviously be adjusted for each department as everyone has specific needs, but um, looking to try to make sure we keep just one person in a main office at a time to um, promote more isolation, um, but again, continue to get work done that needs to get done. Um, many of our department heads 
have access to um, laptops and phones, so we are able to do a lot more remote work, but there are still functions that need to be done in-house, which is why we would look to um, have some kind of staggered schedule that would, again, protect the employees. Um, a main component of this uh, plan would be employees um, need to be willing and able to come into work when asked. Um, this would be looking to um, continue everybody's regular pay, um, but knowing that we have a staggered schedule, if an employee is unwilling to come in or unable to come unable to come in, they have to use whatever pay time off they have accessible vacation personal sick. Um, we're trying to be as flexible as we can be while making sure that we're getting the same amount of productivity completed as um, we would if we were all here Monday through Friday. But again, um, looking at taking protect, um, giving more protections to the employees. Um, social distancing is encouraged where necessary. Um, people who are in-house, um, you know, try to communicate with other departments via um, telephone or email. Um, let's see what else I'm missing here. Um, and then each department is expected to complete all regularly scheduled work, including essential functions that they've listed on their forms. Um, department heads will provide weekly update reports to the town administrator to confirm their progress and indicate any challenges that they may be facing. Um, so we'll be making sure that all of the departments are keeping up, nothing is falling behind, um, and you know we want to come out of this whenever it ends in the same position work-wise um, as we would have been if everyone were here full-time Monday through Friday. Yeah, Roger, um, it's Kevin Gasper. The, uh, yeah, I'm watching you on TV, so I'm like, I can't do that. Okay, um, so as Ms. Hebert said, we, you know, you know, Mr. Chairman, that we've had some uh, employees that were uncomfortable um, with working alongside of other employees. So uh, Ms. Hebert and I worked together on this uh, remote action plan. I think it's important that we, we have this remote action plan in place just in case of, uh, you know, any further virus spread through Bristol County in area um, county so i think it's a good plan to put in place just in case there's uh, the federal government or state government comes with any particular moves and lockdowns and things of that nature um, we were proactive in having this plan developed it's good for the exercise for the employees uh, i hope that the employees in the town doesn't have to utilize these this action plan too much longer but only time will tell right so we the board of selectmen put in a first phase of their um, COVID-19 response plan with shutting town buildings. I think this is the second phase. The Board of Selectmen are looking at implementing for our employees now, even though we still remain close to the public. I think it's about um, giving a peace of mind to, to the employees um, and department heads to understand how we move forward, but we keep the town um, doing business. At, you know, at, About as usual as we can, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I like the plan and Julie did a good job putting this together and you know, we tossed around some ideas about how we could accommodate employees. I think this does it. I think it's pretty well suited for the employees. I don't think there's a whole lot more that we can do at this point in time. The nice thing about a 30-day action plan is we can just keep continuing it down the road. It's not just for the first 30 days. If need be, the Board of Selectmen can say, we are continuing the 30-day action plan and this can go on for our 30, 60, 90, whatever we need to do at the time, but it allows flexibility for the department heads to already have something in place while things aren't severe yet. Um, and we'll be able to run this over the next week and see what's what speed bumps we hit and Julie will keep the board abreast on you know any kind of issues that are arising from this remote action plan. Are you there, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm sorry. It's difficult to, uh, you know, watching the TV on the same. So I, I, I do like the evolution of this plan. I think, I think Julie, when you and I spoke yesterday, uh, you know, it felt like this was heading toward, we're going to go completely dark, we're going to let everybody work from home. And I, I, you know, I think we need to keep government open. I think the one thing that that I like to assure is that the residents have full access to government services. I, you know, we talked about it in the park yesterday, Julie, and I'm not, I'm not going to single mom on TV, but, you know, that, that, we can't walk out the residents and say you can't have access to the assets of the town, that, that we need to provide 
residents with, with full access to government services. And I think we've done all we can do. Uh, we've done a lot of big steps towards securing our employees. But we've got to balance that against, um, you know, we, we need to provide full services to our residents. So I do like the evolution of this plan that we're keeping government offices open. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm fine with people working remotely again. I, I felt that the first iteration of this was we were going dark, everybody was working from home, and I, I was uncomfortable with that. So provided we got people and we are providing services to our residents, um, I'm fine for it. Okay. Yeah, the plan the plan does that, um, Mr. Chairman. We we again, Julie and I spoke the uh, the following day on Thursday, and uh, we Julie was saying what other town managers and town administrators have been discussing, and that's where we came up. It's got that's willing, and the, the employees have to be willing and able. And I think that when we derive to the plan, where Mondays department heads would come in and figure out what needs to be done for the week as they would normally do on any other occasional week that we were regularly scheduled and then tuesdays the clerical and, and other staff would come in and then wednesdays the department heads come back in check back check all the work and what they put down as a list for the clerical and uh, regular staff would have to do and then thursdays they could come the clerical people would come back in and then fridays the department heads would come back in to make sure that everything is is being completed and the employees were showing up to do um, the key essential functions of uh, town government and we are there to answer phone calls and, and provide a service to our public as best as we can under the conditions that we're working under right now um, albeit if the severity of this gets any worse than what we're already seeing um, you know this 30-day action plan might not be uh, you know the plan will be there but we may not be requiring given what the state governor says or the federal government says we might be saying that nobody is to report to town hall facilities and things of that nature but the board has that flexibility to discuss it at that point and if i can um, if i can just extend on that um, i think this is a good step between those two things we don't know what's coming and again what the federal government or state government might sit, might say from here um, I know people have talked about stay in place orders and we don't we don't know what will happen um, so this is a good middle step where where we have people who need um, remote access are, are getting it um, already have it or are getting it right now um, and um, in the meantime we work to keep town hall as open and functioning as possible while keeping people safe and then if we were to get some kind of future order that changes this at least the the most essential functions are able to be done remotely and we're ready for that too I mean, so the only thing I add, I'll, I'll add and I'll, you know, I'm, I'm not here working remotely I, um, I think that all of us to the extent that we don't need to be in town hall should avoid going into town hall I think, you know, we can communicate well over the telephone and to the extent that we don't need to be there, I think we need to do our part and isolate ourselves from the employees of the town hall and, and the employees and the employees from us as well. So to the extent that that's possible, I think that would be proved. That's all I have. I get a motion to endorse the plan as proposed unless anybody else has further discussion on this topic. No, nope, this plan addresses my concerns and I express to my fellow board members and to the town administrator throughout the week. This is just the culmination of it all and um, I believe, right, Mr. Gaspar, would you like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the remote action plan as presented. And I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes. Any further, uh, further issues to discuss? It is, it is a one topic agenda, but I think anything related to that topic at this point would be appropriate while we're in session. Mr. Chairman, we, we have uh, any questions? Yeah. No, I, I am on the agenda for the Tuesday night meeting regarding town meeting. Um, I'm sorry, I can't hear. We have Ms. Labonte, um in the audience, social distancing, mind, mind you. She's six feet away from everybody until just now when she walked by, but it's okay. <laughs> she, I, she's going to go up to the podium. Um, at the last meeting, it was discussed about town meeting possibly delaying it um, and what would be needed if that was to happen. 
Uh, currently, uh, there isn't a law on the books that does allow the moderator to make the change. Um, so as soon as we know if there is going to be a cancellation or a postponement, uh, we need to get that information out. There is not a problem of still holding the election um, before the town meeting. That's not a problem. Um, but if we are going to postpone town meeting, um, we need to, to start thinking about what what action steps and where we might be moving it to. Okay. Yes. Okay. And we'll need to talk with the moderator to make sure that because it has to come from him essentially. I believe Julie and Kevin, um, did we postpone next week's Slackman's meeting? Did we cancel that? The Slackman's meeting for next week has been canceled. Yeah. For Tuesday. Oh, okay. okay. So I'm glad that I right. had the That's opportunity to speak today. Yep. Yeah. And um, assuming we'll still keep the election for May 16th? Yeah. Okay. And uh, we'll make a decision on the uh, the annual town meeting. Okay. Right. We'll, we'll address that. That's pretty far out. We're, we're trying to do it in an immediate response plan right now to where we are so that we're, we're trying to be as precautionary instead of reactionary, right? right? I think that's the goal of the Board of Selectmen is to take these many steps of precautionary actions that we can now. Um, we don't know what's going to happen, Pam. I, I think that the board's doing what they have to do to provide some comfort to our employees um, and for the board to have a plan in place so that we're not being reactionary instead of being precautionary when it comes to moving and how we're going to do business. So this is kind of the second phase, as I said, so there'll probably be multiple phases to it. Yeah. Um, we'll see how this thing transpires. We don't know, right? We know now we have cases in Bristol County and Plymouth County, right, where we didn't a week or two ago so we don't know how this is going to if this will escalate or not but the board of selectmen have to do what we're doing today discussing something that's maybe 50 60 days out right now right we'll figure that out I just, the board I, will figure that you'll be the first one to know i'm sure i hope so uh i just thought it was important because i know that there was discussion about the warrant articles uh, just the other day where there is a timeline for getting the warrant books printed um, by your office mm -hmm. so I def well, I want everybody to be prepared that is also something that we do need to consider okay, okay. Uh, right now our next scheduled meeting is the 31st is that correct Can we yes. make a yes okay so okay. our next scheduled meeting is the 31st Okay. All right. Thank so you. So we'll, we'll figure out what's going to occur for the Board of Selectmen's meeting on March 31st. We have postponed the Tuesday night meeting. Yeah. Um, again, due to this coronavirus, it's, it's, it's moving it's moving in different right. directions right. every day, right? right. So we, we have to keep listening to what the federal and state government are telling us to, what to do and what we have to do. And then we adjust our plans accordingly from there. But for right now, this was just a plan in place for the town government to be able to operate under. It's like a mini umbrella that we're working underneath of right now, so everybody knows what we're doing here. Okay. So, okay. Roger, we, we, uh, I'm all set. Thank you. What would our deadline be? Is that date for the Okay. Um, May 11th, what would our deadline be to make a decision that we're going to move that date out? I suspect there's a point of no return on the mail that we take. Um, I mean, so May, he's, he's saying May 11th. What is the, we're talking about. May 11th, there's things we need to do to have on May 11th. Right, what he's saying is things to do on May 11th. It's hard to hear you in here, Roger, so I'm just, I'm just referring the question back to, back to Pam. He's asking, what is the deadline? We know we have to post 15 days before May 11th, the warrant, but then you're talking about printing and stuff like that. So, Ms. Leonard's. Um, I would think, I we have a schedule upstairs. I didn't think to bring it down because I didn't think we were going to talk about that right now. Okay. But um, we do have a certain schedule that we try to follow depending on, you know, how things are going. It depends on the Finance Committee when they, they can meet. It depends on the Board of Selectmen. Yeah, but normally, under normal circumstances, I think, Roger, you're asking under normal circumstances, what is that threshold, right? There's a there's a 15-day um, posting requirement. Right. So in order to have the, the town meeting, we need to have at least 15 days advance to post it. And before that time, we would need at least 
want at least one meeting to be able to go through everything and sit, you know, the finance committee, especially because they give yeah. the recommendations. Um, that go very right. And I, for my end of it, we have voter registration, which is 20 days before May 11th. That's the, the final deadline for voter registration. And changes. even if we postpone it, it, it doesn't matter if for that, for that, or what do you call it? Early the, voter. Early the, no, the voter registration. Voter registration, the 20 right. days? Yes. So if we yeah. postpone from May 11th to, you know, May 21st, let's just throw out a, a date. Yeah. You have to go by 20 days before the May 21st, or can you just say, no, we didn't do it in time, and it's 20 days before May 11th. Is that a real sticking point for you? No, we would have to just change the date. If it, so if we're going to go further out, so will the voter registration. So will the voter registration. Right. Yeah, okay. Okay. So thank you, Pam. Okay. Roger, um, so we, we voted in, in the remote action plan. Do we want to do we want to discuss how long we're going to do this schedule? Or are we just going to say this is the schedule um, indefinitely until we know that we, you know restrictions are lifted and things of that nature? Do we want to do do we want to do you know put this plan in place for we, just because it's a, we called it a thirty day um, action plan? Do you know do we want to put it in place for thirty days or do you have something else in mind? I'm comfortable with with it until further notice. Um, just based on the way things are developing, I'm comfortable saying it's open for the notice of future. Yeah, I, I, does that make sense? Yeah, it, yeah. Does, it does somewhat say that it does the, wrap it up at the Yeah, end. the yeah. last part just kind of says that um, these arrange arrangements are expected to be short term, and the town of Acushnet will continue to monitor, monitor guidance from health officials and the need for, for remote work arrangements. The town of Acushnet may require employees to return to regular in house work at any time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's similar to until further notice. So just to just to follow up on that, so um, Chris Oliver last night it was close to midnight. He he purchased the Zoom subscription. Um, he was working on a few things this morning, so he wasn't able to come troubleshoot with us. Um, there is a component that um, ties it into the cable, and that's what we were missing this morning. Um, but he's working um, with the cable the cable guys to get that all set up um, later today, um, and then hopefully the the Zoom app I guess records everything. So even if you don't have video access and we had just a phone conversation it would be recorded so that we'd be able to still post that um, even if cable wasn't involved um, so, so it, it seems like it it seems like a better um, overall package for us um, for having remote meetings and um, again you know we may need a troubleshoot here or there but um, once it gets set up it's, we're hoping it'll it'll work much better Roger, we have um, Roger, we have Jim Merritt in the uh, audience. In uh, he, he talked about the uh, the purchase agreement for the energy, and that the Kiasage is looking for something just before they move to another community and ask them. They're just looking for a commitment. Um, Verbal yeah. commitment, Jim. I don't know if you want Jim to go to the podium or speak from where he's at or whatever, but if you don't mind him coming up and talking to us for a quick second on that. Yeah, the only, I mean, the only challenge is it's not on the agenda, so I'm not sure we can take action on it until then. That's I think conceptually, conceptually, we voted that we wanted to do it, all right? Yeah, conceptually, we just don't have any details, and they're trying to get in. If you just let, let Jim, I mean, it is, it is being presented because, you know, we can't hold meetings for the COVID-19, so. State of emergency. Right. Right. With the, I mean, we, we just we just canceled our meeting for Tuesday due to you know all of these um, the state of emergency. So I, I think this is appropriate to have come up here as it's um, somewhat of a part of that emergency. Mm -hmm. well, good morning, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me? Um, yeah, I, I received a phone call this morning from um, Kersage from from Andrew Bernstein. Um, who wanted to know, you know, what direction the selectmen wanted to go, and he's ready to move forward. 
Um, I guess he said to me that Millis is looking for additional um, power, but he's hesitant to move forward. To, he wants to understand what our um, intentions are. He said if we wanted to move forward, he would do it by verbal agreement um, until such time as the details in the document were, were worked out and signed. Um, and we would begin to um, receive you know, credits immediately. I, I think conceptually we're on, we're on board with that. I know he's sent some documentation to me. I've not reviewed this in, this in other properties very recently. I think that everyone knows. So I think conceptually we're on board. Um, I think, you know, we need to understand what he's proposing and how it's going to work. We need to have the contract with you. But I think conceptually everyone everyone on the board was, was wants to move forward. So, so just um. Yeah, no, Mr. Chairman, you're absolutely correct. That's what I said to Jim earlier. That conceptually, we did we did agree to it, but I I, I, I have reservations. What I'll see in the details, but I don't think the board wants to just blanket vote something where we don't know what we're voting. But conceptually, we are in agreement to purchase so much power from Kia Saj. Um, Jim's talked to me about some savings and things like that, but you know, I don't think it's a wise choice for the Board of Selectmen to be voting things they haven't reviewed and understand. And I think this, Mr. Burgess, well, I'll, I'll, I'm not going to respond to any of that. He did send some material, but again, there have been, been distractions, and it's just, it, it moved from something that was very important to us. To a lesser priority given, given the other issues we've been dealing with. So that, that's fine. I don't, think I've, I don't think I've seen the document that you guys are referring to. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. So we'll have to take a, I'll have to take another look at it as well. But I think we can, if it's safe to say, Mr. Chairman, that all three members of the board should review it um, when, when they have time to do it and communicate with Ms. Hebert, the town administrator, to give Mr. Merritt some guidance. I'll, I'll well, also follow that too. Um, town Council, I did forward it to them as well, and I can report it so you all have it. Um, but Town Council has it and they are reviewing it. Um, and so it, what they're looking at is the standard contract that just lays out the terms of the agreement. Um, we had, um, was it CBE uh, that we were doing right. for? So, um, ECA. 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 Yeah. Um, so ECA. I think they're all pretty standard contracts, but obviously, you know, that's why we have Town Council checking through it. Um, and um, you know we'll we'll give you guys the update when town council gets back to us. But I'm sure they've been boggled down too. <laughs> Did Kersage express any date, what time? Like we need this this afternoon. We need it Monday. We need it beginning of next week. No, I think initially they were looking at um, having something in hand by the end of March. Correct. Um, so it really gives us another week. So can, can, can you correct. communicate with Kersage and let just let them know that the board is still interested? I will. We, we I talked will. about it. We just we're reviewing town council's reviewing the document as well as board members reviewing the document that was presented. And um, yes, you know, we are looking know to take action. When I get back to my office. Because I look at it like conceptually, yes, we we are on board with this as far as the numbers. If they're exceptionally far off from what we our basic understanding is from our meeting with them, then of course there'd be further discussion about the numbers. But if everything is in line with what they proposed, you know, I'm I'm, I'm still on board with it. Yeah. It's ultimately be, uh, I wouldn't be in the position to start holding off, holding off, and then have them go go right go in another direction. So so conceptually, yes, if there's some you know, just to keep it going over the next week, if they can wait a few days, you know, till we review stuff, um, I'm, I'm well over it, yeah. Well, I had, I had one concern, and it was just that, you know, when I had spoken to Andrew prior to this, he was scheduled for hip replacement, mm -hmm. um, which when I talked to him this morning, he said basically that this was to take place today, but because it's a non-essential medical, they postponed him indefinitely. So he will be around. Good. And I'll make sure that, you know, everybody gets the information um, so you, you can look at it and... Because I'll look at it and review it and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. proceed with it in a, in a time, you know. Okay. Keep Thank it rolling. You. Thank you, Mr. Merritt. Thank you. 
Roger, there's just one other thing that I want to address with the board, and that is golf. We've only postponed closure of golf for one week. That would be to this Wednesday, cup coming Wednesday. I did receive a phone call from an employee at the golf course, um, you know, throwing some ideas around how they could open that facility up. But, you know, ultimately there are still other relevant concerns for the board to take um, into consideration, i.e. people getting in and out of golf carts, um, bringing the golf carts back, other people getting into golf carts. So I don't know if the board wants to, you know, take any action as far as further closure, to extending that deadline for the, the closure now, or do you uh, you want me to call and talk to uh, Daner and, you know, tell him to put together a uh, uh, his own action plan as far as how he could do business at the golf course and, and forward that to Ms. Hebert so the board can review it and maybe provide some guidance to the golf course before they just open their doors up on Wednesday? Um, I mean, my, my gut is we could probably do that. Um, I don't know. My gut is we could open the golf course and maybe just limit, you know, people congregating in the clubhouse. I... It just feels like the golf course would be something that, you know, it's an open air facility for the most part and, um, you know, limiting, limiting traffic through the clubhouse and, and finding a way to be open. But, um, you know, I think we need to, we need to have a, a data comment on yeah. what his concerns are. Yeah, I, I, I spoke, he called this morning. And I spoke with him and he was kind of uh, jokingly hinting at the drive through window that I mentioned, right? So I said, he said, well, we can, we can kind of do this little drive through window thing and I can bleach down credit cards and take it through a little spot in a, pl a plexiglass window and things of that nature. So I, I, you know, I think he's still concerned about public being in that small room area. And, and, and I think the members, at least I am concerned about that same thing. So I, I think it, it, if you don't mind me talking and having further discussion um, with Dana on this and, and, and speaking with Julie on it to try to come up with a plan if there's if there's any good plan for the golf course I don't know but if you don't mind me working with Dana and Julie on that I'd like to um, figure this out before they start announcing that Wednesday's their opening day and it shouldn't be their opening day well, my yeah, my, Mr. DeRoche would like to say something. My position on it is to keep it closed for the immediate future. Not open on Wednesday. We're still exposing people to the virus, I understand. We talk about being outside. Uh, you're still going to congregate people. You're going to have people coming from different areas to play golf. This will be the only course open in the area. Once again, it's very similar to the Council on Aging or the library. I consider it that way. I'm sure other people have different opinions that you're outside and spread out. But I play golf, you put four people together from different territories or, or different locations, I should say. And you also have, sometimes you have backups. So you now you've got eight people waiting on a tee box to tee off. I just don't feel we're in a position right now with how fluid this whole situation is to give my go ahead to open up on Wednesday of next week and I would continue for another week from there looking at April 1st as a potential opening date giving us a couple weeks to really balance this out and get an understanding. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Well, let's talk, let's talk to Dana and find out what he's thinking. Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm indifferent. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, if it seems like Mr. DeRoche and you have two two separate opinions on how we move forward with the golf course. Would you would you would you entertain a motion? If Mr. DeRoche would like to entertain a motion to keep the golf course closed until April first. I think he yeah. Mr. DeRoche, if you want to make a motion, go ahead. Well, I make a motion to continue the closure of the uh, Cushet River Valley Golf Course until April 1st. I'll second that. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
Did Roger, I couldn't hear him. Oh, were you in favor of that vote uh, last weekend? Say that one more time. Were you in voting in favor of that vote, um, the vote to close the golf course? Uh, I, I didn't vote against it. Okay. okay. Roger, the only other thing that I brought up, and I, I'm sorry, but we're, we're kind of trying to think of everything that we need to think about, at least at least from my perspective, it is, and that is of the planning board. Um, with continuances of their meetings there's a bylaw that's in place where if they reviewed a plan and it's not acted upon within 90 days it's automatically approved miss hebert said she would check with town council to see if that would hold any water if that was the case but I, i'm asking miss hebert to communicate with the planning board and seeing how many of these um subdivision plans or whatever plans they've reviewed in the last 90 days if they're going to come up on on any kind of uh, uh a roadblock as far as that goes if they can't hold meetings well we could have state of emergency at both the state level and the town level i i hope that supersedes any any uh, 90 you know 90 o'clock i, I agree and that's what we're going to do i i agree it must be upon us that you know anybody that's in that circumstance that's counting on 90 days, it might not hurt to send them a letter that says, you know, hey guys, the clock, that 90 day clock is suspended. So, um, you know, we, we, we're putting you on notice that, you know, don't be counting on that. Uh, it doesn't apply given, given these circumstances. Right. Yeah, that's what Ms. Hebert and I said. That's why I, should, I just asked to check with town council to make sure that that would be the case, that this coronavirus would uh, kind of put that fire out if, if it came about. I mean, we do have a national I think the communication to whoever the proponents are would be appropriate. Though. Correct, man. Thank okay. you. Well, the same one. Uh, Chief Gallagher, you have a comment? Mr. Chief, Chief Fire Chief Gallagher is coming to the podium, Mr. Cabral. <clears throat> Gentlemen, thank you, Ms. Hebert, Ms. Leonard. Good morning. Uh, first, I want to. Say, I just wanted to commend the Board of Selectmen, Ms. Hebert, Ms. Leonard, for the leadership that you're you're providing to the town. It, this is uh, uncharted territory for all of us. Uh, it is fluid. Uh, to say that it is changing daily uh, would miss probably the 15 changes that I was confronted with yesterday. <clears throat> so this is a, uh, uh, a, a time where leaders lead and I think a question is being well served. Uh, I will tell you that um, the direction that we're receiving from the Office of Emergency Medical Services on how we interact with uh, patients is also changing. Uh, we have a uh, directive on how we are to respond and uh, engage with folks who are uh, demonstrating either respiratory or fever symptoms. Uh, you'll see our EMTs um, putting on all of their PPE, mask, gown, gloves, and eye protection. Uh, we have a very good protocol in place, uh, and we've used that so far. This week, we've uh, had the need to to uh, enter a home at that high level. Um, fortunately, the patient is doing well. Um, it, out of an abundance of caution, however, uh, I have set the standard slightly higher. Um, effective today, any patient that we engage with, anyone at all, a broken ankle, uh, a stub toe, uh, a car accident, we will immediately be applying a surgical mask to the patient. Uh, we simply don't know. Uh, they're telling us two to three to four days where you can be asymptomatic uh, and contagious at the same time. We're not going to risk our staff. Uh, the, we are a small department, as you know. Uh, losing two, three, four people who may be exposed to a 14-day uh, quarantine would be devastating to us. So we are uh, raising that level just to let the folks, for you to know, uh, but to let the folks at home know as well. Uh, the, we're not trying to scare anyone. Uh, we're simply saying that it's in the best interest of our staff and for them as well. I may be contagious right now. I may be in that uh, two or three day asymptomatic carrier state. Uh, so I want to protect the patient from me and me from them. So we're going to continue that uh, until further notice. Our PPE, prote uh, personal protective equipment, uh, stockpile is adequate for the time being. 
given the call volume that we have now, uh, it's not going to last forever. We have a request uh, made to some of our vendors. It's in transit. Uh, a lot of it is backlogged. I talked with Chief Richmond this morning. He's experiencing the same. Uh, we don't expect there to be an airdrop of masks and gowns and gloves from the federal and state government. Uh, we're in line just like they're in line. Um, but we may, um, we've had a couple of residents contact us to uh, donate N95 respirators that they have uh, from their businesses, and we appreciate that. Um, so we, we are open to accepting those donations if folks uh, are so inclined, but our staff is adequately protected and will be for the foreseeable future. Uh, depending, Mr. Gaspar, on how this plays out in the next uh, couple of weeks, um, you know, our stockpile may diminish, uh, but we'll address that then. Yes, sir. Uh, Chief, on Monday you mentioned there was a downturn in calls over the weekend. Is that uh, standard? That is holding that, true, holding and true? we are very thankful for that. The, you're experiencing uh, three, four a day, or I, is there you know, a number? Three or four to five was our average. Mm -hmm. um, I think the ambulance moved once yesterday. Okay. Uh, and you know, that's a, a, a function of, I think, people wanting to stay out of the ER. Mm -hmm. um, St. Luke's Hospital is, uh, I don't want to say overwhelmed, but it is extremely busy. Uh, they, are, they have their own planning, they have their own uh, processes in place. Um, they'll be segregating respiratory and fever patients from what I understand from non. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, this is all in a state of flux. The less people that go to the hospital, the better. Uh, and it sounds like you know the, the folks in the cushion are heeding the requests of staying home, being healthy, and uh, just kind of uh, letting this play itself out. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Are, are you ready for a motion to adjourn? I'm on with enthusiasm. I'll make a motion to adjourn. And I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Happy Easter, everybody.